classifying this as an undeclared act of war. The blame points to you and your team. The president has initiated ghost protocol. The entire IMF has been disavowed. So what happens now? Your mission, should you choose to accept it. I'm Mike. I'm Kat. I'm Jay. And today we're reviewing Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. But they don't call it Mission Impossible 4. For marketing reasons. Rightfully so. Like the video, Jason will kill me and pull the shit out of my ass. And don't be fooled, this is the fourth Mission Impossible. Is it? Yeah. <gasps> So, IMF is shut down due to the fact that they are essentially framed or linked to this bombing of the Kremlin. The Gremlin? I call it the Gremlin. They put the bomb in the Gremlin's armpits. Oh. Oh, oh, shit. Ethan Hunt and his team, his new team, are on their own to essentially clear the name of IMF and save the world. And Simon Pegg is now a field agent. He's not just a tech guy. The funniest line in the whole film? You don't have enough rope. No shit! Who doesn't like a non-stop action film? But the problem that I have, it was the same old, oh my god, the codes to the nuclear warheads have been stolen. Is that your lunch? Yeah, it's my lunch. Bag, please? Another issue I had with this film is you don't really get to know the villain. You only see him when he's chasing him. You never see him yeah. in his own habitat. You, you don't really know, know how crazy he is. Yeah, really. you can see like one thing. Where one thing. And it is crazy, but... That's it. When you compare him to Mission Impossible 3, Philip Seymour Hoffman, that was a villain, right? In my opinion, it, a, a good villain makes a good hero. This film was missing that. Yeah. And I feel like Tom Cruise was missing his usual charisma. Usually he delivers his lines, he's a bit more warmer. Yeah. He just seemed a lot more cold. The film really is about the last five minutes. A lot of people are distracted by the oohs and the ahs of the action, and they're forgetting about the skeleton of the story. Mm -hmm. And I think this film, forgive me for saying it, but it's a little bit overrated. It has like 95% Rotten Tomatoes. So that's yeah. crazy. Someone once said to me that to have a good film, you have to have three good scenes and no bad scenes. I feel like that's why I did that. All the scenes were decent, and then there yeah. were at least three really cool action sequences. And the gadgets in this were crazy. You know what it felt like? Let's take the series in a new way. Let's add some classic James Bond to it. The bad guys seem to have the classic James Bond sort of flavor to them. I mean, there was an assassin who only would be paid in diamonds. She was hot. I bet your clip's amazing. Puts diamonds on it? Yeah. Oh. That's what's cool about the Mission Impossible uh, uh, franchise. New director, and it's a completely Bradford. new film every time. Except John Woo. I didn't like the, the, the doves. I hated the doves. But I did think the music was horrible in this. Mm. It was out of place. There was no real... It didn't hit on the right notes. Although I will say this though, the shots that they have are fantastic. Some yeah, of the, the shots are of high buildings, the chase scenes. The, the cinematography in this is incredible. But I think that comes from Brad Bird being, you know... Brad Bird. Brad Bird being from Pixar, he's got an eye for those sort of things. But Some might say an iPhone. Because Apple products do show up. Oh my gosh, all the time. Oh, iPad, the iPhone. I think it's cool that IMF uses uh, Apple products now. iPads, iPhones everywhere. At the heart of this story, it's very gimmicky. Like yeah. a revenge story, yes. then there's a big plot twist story But you know what it does on. well, though? Wait, then there's the rookie who's who's funny and nervous, but then... Plucky relief? Yeah. But you know what it does well, though? I always say that a good action film has, or any good film has, lots of conflict in it. It's right when the scene's settling down, you know, some, an explosion happens, or a sandstorm comes, right? There's always problems on top of problems on top of problems yeah, on top yeah, of problems. It keeps the pace going. Yeah. They did a real good job of taking the story at the beginning and making you feel like you're actually on this adventure with yeah. them, like all the way through it. There's never a dull moment. Mm -hmm. Like you're a real woman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They'll explain what their plan is, you're like, okay, cool, okay, let's watch this unfold, and then suddenly all these other things are thrown at them. What are you eating when you watch it? I was eating fries with some cheese. Paula Patron is that lady. She's she looks from, like chocolate. Well, she's from Deja Vu, she's also from Mirrors, and she was in Precious, so she's been in a few decent she's things. She's sexy. She's, when she's <laughs> Venus, that dress, damn. Yeah, I'm gonna have some deja vu with her. When she's changing that I really like that, that whole car. scene with her and that millionaire. And that guy's name is Emile Kapoor. And he was hilarious. He did a great job being the Playboy millionaire or billionaire. And he was also in Slumdog Millionaire. Very famous in India. So what do you guys give this film movie out of 10? Jay, I, I love how you're eating again. It's coming, it's coming back. It's coming back. You're good. I'm hungry. I give this a 7.5. 
Five, yeah, I'll do it. Don't. Ten. Oh, now, and you smell like meat again. Yeah. The composer on this film dropped the ball. The cinematography uh, included with the director together really did a good job. But unfortunately, the, the script was very weak. Gimmick, gimmick, amazing action, gimmick, gimmick. Because it was not very serious at times. It felt like a family film sometimes. It's only PG-13. Yeah. I give this film an 8 out of 10. Uh, again, action was amazing. I had a, a ball with the action. The numbers, really? The codes for the nuclear warheads? Is that the best you can come up with? But saying that, it's one of those films you can just sit back and not really think about and just enjoy the ride. And I could see people who don't watch films that much just want to have fun. This is probably amazing for them. I really wish that they would explain the villain more. Good boy! No, don't want to buy my sandwich. <laughs> he doesn't have poo. He pee on him. He's a good boy. You're a good boy. Out of 10, I give this an eight. Uh, as an action movie, I think it's awesome. As a movie overall, a story that's been told again and again. And the music, I don't know, it didn't affect me as much as it affected Jay. However, the cinematography, I thought was great. The action sequences, I was excited. I was nervous, I was going, like, the last scene for me was kind of like blah blah blah. If you want to just go see an action movie, have a fun time, this is a great one to see in the theaters, and it's a great one to see once. You know what? It's not as good as Mission Impossible 3. Annie, thank you for the shirt. Thanks, Annie. Thanks, Annie. Kat, what do you think of that? I, oh my god, he's pooping for me on the floor. Oh, he did it. Don't you just took a shit. Mission accomplished! <laughs> I guess. Yoshi! You know what? Uh, I don't like to mm. have a fight. Is it mild? Is it mild or hot? It's fresh shit we got here. Three kilobytes.